Hello everyone, welcome back to another edition of Indie Book Review, where today I am reviewing The Vulture King by Nikki Turner. This is not a very big book, and it's fairly middle grade in terms of audience. So, when I give it my critiques, I'm going to try and keep that in mind. So, let's get into this. Let's start with the plot. The plot is basically, there's this magic. And whoever's able to use magic either is blind, deaf, or mute. It's pretty straightforward, but they're able to uh, see, hear, or speak through birds. Basically, they have a bird that they connect with, and that bird is their eyes, ears, or voice, which is kind of really interesting. I've never seen a magic system done that way, and I was like, that caught my attention very quickly. So anyway, the main character, Aram. He's blind. He's got a bird that's a magpie, and his mother was taken when he was very young by the Vulture King. And the Vulture King is the bad guy, essentially. So Aram has pretty much been on his own since like he was six years old, up until he was 12. And he's kind of had to grow up a little hard. He's kind of had to grow up with a bit of a distrust of people in general, because people who use magic are generally feared. Because those who have magic are targeted by the Vulture King. And so those who don't have magic, they're scared of the people who do have magic because it calls the Vulture King down on them. And sometimes that gets misconstrued as hatred, which also kind of a neat little thing going on there. I approve of that. So Aaron beats this guy, Baron. I think that's his name. I'm pretty sure that's his name. And meets a little girl whose name I don't remember. It's not that the character's not memorable, I just don't remember the name. <laughs> I'm bad with names. Anyway, moving on. So, Baron tells the two kids that there is a place where those who have magic are safe. So he takes them there. And then they're not very safe. And then they're, they're no longer safe because there's a betrayer in their midst. So, they go to this other place where they can potentially get more magic. Well, at least where one person can get more magic to defeat the Vulture King. So, Aram goes up, he gets the magic, blah, 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 you get where it's going. It's a middle grade book, you're not going to get any uh, shocking scenes or, you know, major plot twists. It's pretty straightforward. And for a book like this, that's actually really okay. I'm, I actually had no problem knowing where this book was going to go. I mean, it's only a hundred and some pages long. And it's the only one. Like, it's a standalone book. So it's not like we were going to get some big plot twist at the end and then have it cut off. Like, I knew where it was going I knew where it was going to go and how it was going to end. And I was totally fine with that. Especially for what this book was. So, let's get into, into some of the positives, shall we? Base, first off, the magic system. I've never seen a magic system like that. And like I said before, that caught my interest immediately. And I really enjoyed this magic system. Like I said, it's not something that I, I'd seen very often. Uh, the characters. The characters are, are fairly well written. They're fairly believable. Like, Aram gets really annoying a lot of the time. But the character, but the other characters pretty much call him out on his bullshit at just as often as he's being annoying. So, it's not, be, it's not due to the writer not knowing what they're doing. It's totally intentional. So, and well, while that does, and while it is very annoying, the sake that it's intentional is definitely nice to see. I see it very often where the characters are annoying and they're supposed to be seen as this righteous person or something like that. No, the sake that Aram is portrayed as kind of being a a bratty little bitch, basically everything's wrong, my, everything's my fault, everything blah 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 blah. Oh, poor me, oh poor what was me. Yeah, that's totally intentional. And I I didn't like the character, but I liked everything that was going on around it. Uh, the Vulture King in and of itself, not bad. Not bad at all. A little underwhelming, I suppose, in the long run, because you don't really see much of the Vulture King. The book is pretty small. But it's not a high sci-fi. or It's not high fantasy. It's not a big series. So you're not going to get a lot of the villain. You're going to get, okay, this is kind of who the villain is. This is what he's done. And you're going to show a little, you get to see a little bit of what he's done. 
And it's not really until the final battle we really see the scope of what the Vulture King has done and what he is capable of. And apart from that, uh, Baron is a badass, which I always approve of. I like my, I like badasses in fantasy. <sighs> but let's get into the critiques. They're, they're not cons by any means, but they're definitely critiques. First off, and I mentioned this before, Aram gets really annoying, and it's through a lot of the book. He's very, very frustrating to try and read. His friends are not so bad. Baron is a, is a badass. Uh, but Aram, he has this sort of weird jealousy against this guy named Ty that I kind of get, but I don't get at the same time. Uh... Yeah, he's just very down. He's very woe is me a lot for a lot of the book, and it got really annoying very quickly. Uh, like I said before, not seeing the Vulture King enough. Like The book really could have stood to expand just a little bit more. But at the same time, it's a middle-grade book. I'm My critiques are mostly for what it would have been if it were an adult book. And I think middle-grade just might not be my age range. Like, might not just might just not be the age range in which I can personally enjoy it. Like YA, I can kind of. I have a little bit of a rough time with YA because it does tend to be a little on the immature side. Middle grade, kind of the, along the same line. I don't hate it. I can find some enjoyment out of it, but it's just it's not really my age range. At least not in terms of my enjoyment. I can see why some people w would enjoy this, and for. For all intents and purposes, I did enjoy this. I didn't, I did not like the book. I really did like it. There's just some parts where it was just really frustrating, kind of annoying to try and get through. But that's about as far as that critique goes. Like as far as the main character's doom and gloom personality goes, I've definitely seen way worse, and I definitely understand where he's coming from, because you know he did lose his mother when he was six, and he had had been on his own for a long time. So it's not like I don't understand where the character is coming from. It's just hard to read sometimes. Oh, the last real critique that I have is sometimes it got a little hard to really grasp that these characters are blind or deaf or mute. Especially uh, like especially the girl who's a mute. She speaks through her bird. so And the bird has her voice or what her voice would be if she were speaking. Which, you know, that's kind of neat. But it doesn't translate quite as well through the through pages this book like this book would have done really really well or at least been really really interesting as say a tv series or or even like just a movie of some sort which i get that's not really in the cards especially for a lot of storytellers this is not really reality but when that's one of my biggest concerns, one of my biggest critiques, is that it just, some bits didn't fully translate well to the book. You know the book's not bad. You know the book is kind of good. So, I think all in all, I'm going to give The Vulture King a 7 out of 10. It does a really good job of what it is. Aram gets really annoying, but far from that, that's about as far as the critiques go. 7 out of 10. Enjoyed the book. You should pick this one up, especially if you enjoy middle grade. Or if you have a kid that uh, enjoys middle grade, pick this one up. It's not a bad read. And this is coming from a person who's middle, who has openly stated that middle grade is just not his, his preferred age range in terms of book enjoyment. But anyway, that's all I got for you guys. So, have a good one.